Hey guys, it's me, Holly Madison. Welcome back to my channel. If you could like and subscribe, I would really appreciate it. Uh, welcome to my messy closet. I was just in Disney World a couple weeks ago and I haven't completely finished unpacking yet. So there you go. I went from Disney World kind of straight to Vegas for a week and now I'm back and still need to finish unpacking and organizing and all that fun stuff. But first I wanted to jump on here and make another YouTube video. I love doing these Q and A's with you guys. And ever since the show Girls Next Door started streaming again on Amazon, I don't know if it's still on Amazon, it was for a while. Um, everybody's been asking me all kinds of crazy questions about it. So I thought I would do a Q&A. I got a ton of questions from you guys. Thank you so much for the questions. Of course, I don't have time to answer all of them without boring you to death, but I tried to pick a lot of questions that were representative of things a lot of people were asking. And I tried to pick questions that were answering things I did not answer in my book, Down the Rabbit Hole, which has a lot of behind the scenes details, if you didn't know. So, um... I'll start with the first question. Um, Athena Angela asks, was it a fun time in your life and do you miss it? When we were filming the show, that was a really fun time in my life. And I know I've talked a lot about things at the mansion not being so great, but I was there for seven years total. And for like the first three and a half years, things were really, really miserable. And I always kind of had hope that things would get better and they got a lot better when the show came along. Um, everybody who lived at the house got along so much better than we did kind of with the cast of characters that was there before. And doing the show was something I had a lot of hesitation about. I was really nervous about it. I was a really private person and I didn't know how I felt about having, you know, my personal life, especially one that I hadn't really come to terms with myself being public and on screen for the world to see. So I definitely had mixed feelings about it for a while, but it was a great opportunity and it turned a lot of the negativity into the situation into a positive situation in a lot of ways. So I'm super grateful for the opportunity. So yeah, that was a happy time in my life. Not 100% happy. I wasn't totally happy with um, the personal life relationship, but it was way better than it had been in the past. So comparatively, yes, it was a happy time. <laughs> Call Me Pritch asks, did producers ever feed you lines you didn't want to say or ask you to do things you didn't want to do? Absolutely, they fed lines that I didn't want to say. Nothing that was crazy or too big of a deal or super out there. But I remember being asked to repeat myself a lot, like always the same gag. And again, this show was from like 10, 15 years ago. And after I wrote my book six years ago, I kind of let a lot of memories like fall out of my mind, like the forgetters from the movie Inside Out came and just vacuumed those things up. So I don't remember specifically what I was asked to repeat all the time. I think it was stuff along the lines of like wanting to marry Hef and stuff like that. They just wanted that same gag over and over and over again. And I kind of felt bored doing that. I felt like the show could go deeper or could go in other directions. And they just kind of wanted the same thing over and over, which I get it. It's just supposed to be like a light, fun show, something that people watch at the end of the day when they're winding down, like it wasn't supposed to be that deep. But when you're the one doing it, you kind of want to push it a little, I guess. So there were times I would get bored with things like that. Or, and a lot of times I would just go along with it and just say it because I knew I would be sitting in that interview chair until they got what they wanted anyway. <laughs> I remember there was one time there was a specific producer was asking me to say something I did not want to say. And I totally dug my heels in and didn't say it. And the way she kept arguing with me about it was... I would say, well, I'm not gonna say that because I don't feel that way. And I don't remember exactly what the thing was. I think it was something where they were trying to make it look like I was jealous of someone else, like some other girl or something. And I'm like, I don't, I don't care. I don't feel that way. And they're like, yes, Holly, yes, you do. Just say it, just say, it. yes, you do feel that way. And I'm thinking, you see me when we're filming, when I'm completely on guard, by the way, because I know I'm being filmed and I'm very private and protective of myself. And like, who are, who are you to try and like brainwash me and say, and gaslight me and say, no, you do feel that way when I don't. It was just like annoying. So I just dug my heels in and I never said what I, what they wanted me to say. So whoever they were trying to, I don't even remember who it was. It was probably some playmate or something, but you know, in those years that we were filming, we always had really good relationships with the women who were, you know, testing for playmate and shooting for playmate and things like that. So I wasn't going to say anything disparaging about someone else so 
that was one example I remember. Sorry, I can't be more specific about it. But yeah, there were times for sure when they were just like, okay, say this. And then we would have to repeat it back. That was mostly how the interviews went down. Lucy asks, was the staff at the mansion nice and friendly or creepy? They were totally nice. <laughs> I don't remember anybody on staff at the mansion, like whether it was butlers or people who worked on the parties or at the zoo or in the video department. I don't remember anybody in that position ever being creepy. I was trying to think, were there, was there ever anybody who maybe got fired right away for being creepy or anything like that? But I can't remember anybody. Everybody who worked there was really nice and really cool and appropriate. And I'm sure, you know, they were told not to interact with us in any weird way. Probably, I don't know. They were just all nice. So they were, they were as nice as they looked on the show, for sure. Lily Moore asks, was the mansion haunted? Absolutely. I mean, I've probably talked about this before. Like I know on Bridget's podcast, I've talked about it. But there were several times. There was the first time I ever saw like a full body apparition was in the gym at the mansion. And I know Bridget saw full body apparitions in her room as well. And we would have these moments. Like I was in her room once and we were just talking about ghosts and stuff. And I'm like... You know, like I haven't really seen anything because at the time I had seen the thing in the gym, but I was still kind of in denial about it because it was just so weird. And sometimes when you see stuff you can't explain, you just want to try and explain it away any way you can, even if you can't totally debunk it. And I was like, you know, I just love all that stuff. Like I love anything scary, but I just, you know, I just really wish somebody would like send me a sign or something. Like I really want to see something before I can really believe in it. And at that moment, her TV just like burst on really loud. And it was just like the timing of that was so uncanny. We really felt like it was something trying to communicate with us. So we always had little things like that. Or there was a bathroom sounds weird that I would hide in a bathroom, but I had no privacy at that house. So there was this bathroom up on the third floor that I would hide in sometimes if I wasn't feeling well or just wanted to be by myself and nobody to disturb me. And like the toilet would flush by itself sometimes. And it was always at weird little moments where I felt like it was somebody trying to communicate with me. So there's probably a million other stories I'm not even thinking of right now, but for sure that place was haunted. Libby Rand asks, when did the nine o'clock curfew end for you guys? Okay, so if you didn't know to live at the house and be half's girlfriend, you had to be back indoors at nine o'clock. Like you couldn't be out later than nine. Um, and that curfew never ended for me. It might have looked like it ended for some of us because on the show, you know, we were allowed to stay out later and do certain things if it was for the show. But I mean, for me, it never ended. Maybe for one of the other girls, maybe maybe they felt like they could stay out past nine. But for me, it never ended. Not until the day I left. Chow Chi asks... Did you really time each other's screen time? And was there competition between the three of you for screen time? And I know what you're referring to. So recently there was this show on E! where it was kind of like a compilation show where they were, um, Andy Cohen hosted it and they were talking about just reality TV and people who'd been on reality TV, things like that. Bridget and I were both asked to participate in that. This was last year during quarantine. We both said no, because I just thought, it doesn't sound like anything I'd be interested in. And when it comes to my story about that time in my life, I'm really particular about who I will talk to and who I will do interviews with about it because I'm so over just being part of like the Playboy version of stories and having myself edited to fit that. So I just didn't trust it. Like I'm obviously okay talking to you guys here on YouTube because I control this. I'm okay going on Call Her Daddy because I trust Alex and I know that she's gonna tell like the real raw story. But I just didn't feel good about that opportunity. I just had no interest in doing it anyway. Anyway, but who did go on it was the former executive producer of Girls Next Door. And he told this story where he said that we were all supposedly, according to him, super competitive with each other for screen time and that Bridget would break out a stopwatch and literally time how much screen time each person got. Completely untrue. And I'm kind of grossed out that he even said that because first of all, why he would accuse Bridget of that and bring her into it, I have no idea. Like Bridget is exactly what you'd see on the show. She was like the sweetest, most unproblematic person and she never did anything to him. So I don't know why he drags her name into this. But this guy was a very weird 
person. I used to really like him. I thought he was charming. I thought he was fun to talk to. But over the years, I just realized what a manipulator he was and how he would try and play the three of us against each other, even on even past Girls Next Door, because he produced our spinoffs too. So even into that era, he would try and like play us off each other and make us jealous of each other to like get us to do things he wanted for the show. And I could see that that's what he was doing, but not everyone could see that. So that was a little frustrating. And I just feel like even like down to his final breath, he was still trying to cause drama and trying to like stir the pot and be like, ooh, they were so competitive for screen time. But that just wasn't true. Like when I first started Girls Next Door, I was excited about the opportunity, but I was super nervous about it too. I even wrote in my memoir that I had been put on antidepressants because I had such bad depression and anxiety right before the show started because I was just really nervous. I was already in this personal situation living at the mansion that I wasn't exactly proud of. I hadn't quite wrapped my head around it or what I wanted to do and how to get out of it. So I thought, okay, this show could be a really good opportunity, but it's also me like blasting this personal life that I can't even wrap my head around publicly. And I don't really feel good about that. So I participated in it, of course, but at the same time, like I was not in any way thirsty for camera time. I wouldn't even say I really enjoyed doing the show until like season three. That was when I finally got more comfortable with it. And you can kind of see me, you know, maybe participating in storylines a bit more. But in the beginning, I would hide out in my room a lot because I shared a room with Hef. I could hide in Hef's room because nobody wanted to disturb him. And I, you know, nobody was gonna walk into that room or knock on the door and be like, hey, can we come film? So I would go hide in there a lot and I didn't have to participate as much because I was nervous about it and I didn't really know what I was getting into. I didn't know what the show was gonna look like once it was all cut and finished and I was super nervous about it. So for him to do a blanket statement and say we were all competitive for screen time, completely false. Also, I feel like the show always was pretty even. Like I don't feel like, I mean, I never sat there with a stopwatch, but I, so I could be wrong, but I just don't feel like it ever really favored time with one or the other, maybe. Maybe me a little bit less because I was so private in the beginning, but I just think it's really gross that he said that and I think he should be ashamed of himself. You know what he reminds me of? If you've ever seen the Judy Garland movie where Renee Zellweger plays Judy Garland, they'll do flashbacks and have scenes with like Louis B. Mayer who was Judy Garland's boss when she was at MGM. And the way that character acts toward Judy Garland, like, like that reminds me of him. Like it was just a very weird paternalistic relationship where he thought we were his puppets and he could like manipulate us to do whatever. It was just kind of like gross and I had to like cut him out of my life eventually. And I just think he's like, I know he's bitter at me and mad at me for writing the book, but for him to like bring up Bridget and say she did something she didn't do to try and make her look petty, I think is 100% wrong. And I think that's messed up. Brie Jenner asks, did you keep all the clothes? I have almost all my outfits from the show. Well, not almost all my outfits because I didn't keep like the casual wear, like any of the track suits or the jeans. Like I re-wear my clothes to death. So they would have just been like falling apart. So I didn't keep a lot of the casual clothes. Anything I wore like a cocktail dress or like a formal outfit or one of the costumes for one of the parties, I do have all that stuff. Like I never touched it or gave it away or anything. Like I'm kind of a hoarder with memorabilia type things. Vanessa Mish asks, something you miss most about the mansion? People always ask me if I miss it. I'm always like, hell no. The only thing I miss is the animals. I always wonder how my favorite animals are doing and if they're still around, like Coco the monkey or Carol the bird. I totally miss them. Melissa Navarro asks, what was your favorite party at the mansion? My favorite party was 4th of July. It was different from all the other parties. It was during the day, like we would watch fireworks at night, but the main party was during the day. And Hef would just play backgammon with his friends at a table and we could do whatever we wanted. We weren't expected to sit at the table with him the whole time. So it was one of the few times and the only party really where I felt like I could walk around and like socialize with other people and like talk to his friends and stuff. So I always felt a lot more free at that party than the other ones. So that one was my favorite. Plus we added the slip and slides in later years, which is my idea. <laughs> 
Trisha asks, was it as fun as it looked? Was I sad when it ended? And would I ever do another reality show? Yeah, I would do another reality show if the idea was right. I have one that might be coming out soon. So I'm excited about. Was it as fun as it looked? Yeah, it was really fun. I mean, not everything was perfect with the show, of course, but everything we did, most of the stuff we did on camera was really fun. And like I said before, it was just such a bright light in this otherwise kind of scary existence up there for me. Like that was how I experienced it. So I really thought the show was a good opportunity. And over time, I started to look forward to the days we were filming and I thought it was fun. And was I sad when it ended? You know, a little bit. And I knew that I was walking away from a lot because the other two girls were leaving when I was there and the show was supposed to go on as a show about me and Hef and my job at the studio and the women who would come to try out for Playmate or become a Playmate. Maybe some of the Playmates would stick around like in the guest house and be more regular characters. So I definitely was giving up a lot, but at that point in my relationship with Hef, things had just got so bad. Like he became really like over the top, verbally abusive almost overnight. And I just was panicking and I was like, I can't stay here, like no more, like this is it. Like I lived there for so long, kind of under this delusion that the whole reason I was miserable was like the other girls, not meaning the two on the show necessarily, but there were like a lot of other people in the earlier years when I lived there. So I always kind of thought that like, they were the problem and they were the drama and they were the one causing all the drama but when it got to the point where everyone else was leaving and I was the only one and you're only dealing with that other one person one-on-one -on -one, then you really start to see their true character and I just panicked I was like I don't care what I'm giving up like I have to get out of here so I was a little bit sad that like the fun times were leaving but not to the point where I ever even stopped to rethink my decision Clayton asks what happened to your dogs from the show well it's been 15 years, so you might be able to guess. I will include a PSA um, for Adopt Don't Shop. Two of my dogs, um, my first two dogs that I got, the Pomeranians. This was before I got educated about dog rescue and really got enthusiastic about rescuing dogs. Um, I got them from pet stores. Um, they were purebred, and sometimes when they're purebred, they get to be a little inbred, and they had some complications later in life um one of them had a lung issue one of them had an issue with their throat and there was just a point where there was not anything more i could do about it and duchess passed away of natural causes she was nine when i got her like almost 15 years ago she was my first rescue she was abused she was taken away from a puppy mill where she had been just bred almost to death and she was really really scared of people like she used to just growl and snap and it took me a lot of time to earn her trust she was really afraid of people for so long and yeah she lived to a ripe old age considering Madeline asks, why did you make the contest winners sit alone at your Marie Antoinette birthday party? I don't remember if I was the one in charge of where they sat. Even if I like led them to the table, I don't know if I picked. It might have been the show saying, oh, they should sit here so we can get a good shot. I don't know. I don't remember. But if I did seat them alone, it's be probably because I'm like a really shy person and I get intimidated in social settings really easily. And if I want a contest to go somewhere, I might want my own little private table that's like still in the mix. So I don't remember if I was the one who sat them there or if I picked or not. But if I did, that would be why. It wasn't like I was trying to like get them out of the way, but I probably would have assumed they would have been more comfortable. I don't know. George P asks, if the E! Network asked for a reunion special, would you do it? No, and they have asked. They asked last year, and I know, cause I still talked to Bridget, that we both turned it down cause we just thought, no, why? Um, it's just not interesting to me to do a reunion. Like I might do a twist on a reboot if there was like some kind of an interesting twist to it, but not just like a straight up reunion that just does nothing for me. Because Ingrid said so asks, I'm watching season three right now. Was it as awkward as it seems? Cause girl, <laughs> it's funny because everybody kind of interprets things a little bit differently. I got a ton of questions like that. Like, was there as much tension between you and the other girls as it looked on the show? But I also got a ton of questions like, it seemed like you guys were best friends and like sisters. Were you really that close? So I guess it's all in the eye of the beholder. Sometimes there was tension, yes. Um, was tension encouraged? Absolutely. Like tension was encouraged 
by Hef from the beginning, even before the show was there. Like he would very much create double standards and different rules for the girls. And it was designed so I think he could have a big ego and he could feel fought over and he could make the girls feel like they were invested. And it was just really gross in my opinion. Casanova asks, did you have anyone negotiate your salaries on the show or did they just decide? They just decided. Well, first of all, we weren't paid at all. And then we were finally paid. And it's not that the salaries were bad. It's just we didn't get any say or couldn't negotiate those at all. It was just decided for us. We were very much treated by, and I don't want to put the blame on the network because we were so far removed from the network that I, we weren't even in communication. I feel like it was more like Hef and like the producers just wanted to keep us controlled. And there even came a time where we were supposed to sign a contract and other people didn't want to sign it because they wanted their agents or their managers or lawyers to look at it, which is perfectly reasonable. Everybody should have that. But we were all three pressured to sign that day. And we were told that the show would just be canceled. And it, you know, if you don't sign right now, it's over. And we were all cornered separately. And who wants to be the one to be like, uh, sorry, girls, show was canceled because I wouldn't sign. Like, no, not going to happen. So that was just ridiculous. Like we were completely treated like children. Boo is Brooke asks, why didn't they show your exit like they did for the other two girls? I think they didn't do it because they thought I was going to come right back. I think they thought this was just like a temporary blip on my radar and they wanted me to come back so they could continue Girls Next Door the way they thought they were going to with, you know, me working at the studio and the playmates and things like that. I think they just thought, oh, wow, why did she change her mind so suddenly? This is she'll be right back, which, of course, didn't happen. So I think, and also because um, once I left, I was involved with another guy and Hef's ego was always very tied up into how the show portrayed him and portrayed his relationship with the other women. So I don't think they wanted to admit that I was attracted to anyone else, even though everybody else knew from reading the tabloids that was what was happening. But I think those were the two reasons. I think one, they thought I was going to come back. They kept asking me to come back long after I left. And two, they didn't want to show that I could ever be attracted to anyone else. Kate asks, were all of the trips scheduled for content for the show or did he let you travel all the time? Absolutely content for the show, like not allowed to travel. I was terrified to leave for any reason just because of the way I'd been conditioned when I was there the first couple of years. I always felt like someone was always trying to take my spot or that I would be kicked out. I'd seen it happen to so many other people like... I'd seen other girlfriends go to visit their families and then next thing they know they come back and their stuff is packed in boxes and they're not allowed back on the property because some other girl came in and told Hef something bad about them or something they supposedly did. It was a drama show. Like if cameras would have been around like the first year I lived there, it would have been crazy. Like it wouldn't have been Girls Next Door. It wouldn't have been a cute show that everybody loved because I don't think anybody would have been able to like relate to or attach to anyone who was there. But it would have been like a dark, depressing documentary, I think. Michael B asks, did Hefferly drink Jack Daniels or was that just a commercial? He did really drink Jack Daniels and he would have a water bottle with him sometimes, but he drank Jack and Coke like from morning to night. Like, I, I don't know how he lived. I don't know. I don't know how he lived drinking that much Jack and Coke. Which reminds me, he was allergic to bacon. He would have like a mild allergic reaction to bacon. But he would always insist on eating this breakfast at night meal sometimes. And sometimes he'd eat the bacon. And he'd start like coughing up a lung. Like, I thought he was going to like choke. So he'd have to like down almost a bottle of Benadryl. I'm like, is this worth it? Is this worth it for the bacon? It was kind of scary. Unicorn asks, do you receive any royalties from Girls Next Door? Let's all guess. Um, no, of course not. Um, I was on a reality show. I wasn't protected by any union. I wasn't, um, that work wasn't seen as under jurisdiction from SAG-AFTRA. So nobody was looking out for us as far as residuals or anything like that. And of course, that was never built into our deals because why would they build that into our deals? And I just, ugh, it's, it's just... Not that residuals are that much money anyway, or that it matters, but just the way we were treated and how we weren't allowed to have like lawyers and agents look at our contracts. I mean, that would never fly, like that would never happen today. It's just crazy. 
And just the fact that we were already in this weird personal relationship that was very culty. And then just the fact that when they started showing nudity on the show that we thought would be blurred out, we weren't ever warned. It's just the whole thing is gross to me. But I mean, at the end of the day, the show was a really amazing opportunity and it did give me a lot of confidence and it probably gave me enough confidence to finally leave that situation. So that's amazing. And I wouldn't like not do the show again. But I can look back and say, what the hell were you guys doing? Like we were just treated in such a gross way that would never be allowed today, I feel like. So this video has gone on pretty long. Let me know if you wanna see any other type of Q&A or what kind of video you'd like to see next. And I will see you guys next time, bye.